Yo, what's good, everyone? And welcome to a special Thursday episode of the world famous Behind the Baller podcast. This show is brought to you in 8K high definition sound. Didn't say Doge Finition. Listen, Doge is a little bit down right now, but that's okay. Just wanted to say high definition this time. Okay. Yo, this is a Dust Brothers production. Nothing but professional podcasting at its finest. Sorry, y'all lost my voice, man. You know, had the Lakers game last night. It was crazy. Um, by the way, I am your host, Ben Baller, not Ben Humble, a.k.a. the Korean Liam Neeson, a.k.a. Mr. Bad Back, a.k.a. the Watch Lord, a.k.a. the Forrest Gump of Hip Hop, a.k.a. the Korean LeVar Ball, a.k.a. the Korean motherfucking Steven Seagal. Yo, what's good, y'all? It is fucking Thursday. Um, we are what? Shit. A couple weeks away from Christmas. I uh, hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, what is this? Episode 237. Yeah, man. So we are here as of right now. By the way, guys, this is not an ad. Okay? I, I just want to tell you guys. As of right now of this podcast, you guys listening right now, if you listen in real time, it's 12 p.m. noon Pacific time. Three hours ago, my Captain Morgan Holiday OG Spice and Ice Holiday Gift Box is available. I said holiday twice. Fuck you, I know. My Holiday OG Spice and Ice Captain Morgan Gift Box is available right now for sale. It's $67. And if you buy one, you are automatically entered into a huge fucking giveaway. Okay? One lucky person who purchases my Holiday Gift Box will win a $25,000 gold diamond Captain Morgan Ben Baller chain. It is fresh as fuck. Go to the pictures. Look at that chain. That chain is cra- It's heavy. It's beautiful. Okay? That signature mix, OG Spice and Ice, my drink, right? My Captain Morgan signature drink consists of Captain Morgan spiced rum, of course, uh, dried pineapple grinds, pineapple juice, a little simple syrup, and a splash of club soda. Don't sleep. That shit is absolutely fucking delicious. Remember, all you got to do to enter the $25,000 chain giveaway is buy one of the gift boxes. It's a great drink. Box is dope. Look, look, fuck with your boy. They got these little um, stainless steel ice cubes that I fucking love. Now I'm addicted to them. You know, they got the Penn Bar logo, the Captain Morgan logo, all that shit. So anyways, we ran around town yesterday with the whole Captain Morgan team serving up some homies, serving up some media people, serving up some influencers with my holiday gift boxes. And, uh, you know, Captain Morgan came big. They got the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, wrapped the whole joint with the Captain Morgan Ben Baller partnership. And look, I fucking love Captain Morgan. Love the whole team. Shout out to everyone at Diageo. Shout out to my, everyone. Just I love everyone at that entire company. It's incredible. Um, check out my most recent Instagram post for all the details, how to purchase the gift boxes, all that stuff. It is limited edition. We did not make a lot of them, just in them for fun. You know, I want you guys to kind of, you know, get a taste of, of Captain Morgan, you know what I'm saying? See why I'm fucking with this so heavy. Cause I haven't drank rum in a while. Like some mixed drinks have rum, but like I fuck with it big time. Okay. So anyways, guys, I wasn't going to do this show for very good reasons. Right. And as my diehard BTB Army people know, I'm not obligated to give you a Thursday episode right now. Okay. And um, even though I'm broken down, like I'm broken down to the brake pads. Okay. The reason why I'm doing this episode today and I'm forcing myself is strictly because it's important that I tell you how hard it is when you take on more than you can handle. And, I, and I'm 100% victim of it. A lot of things were booked months ago. You know, you start prioritizing, like, can't push Captain Morgan to the side. It's my biggest sponsor, right? My biggest partner. Can't push my kids to the side. You know, thank God I haven't go has other things, but, you know, they need me for some shit. So it's like, you know, I got a lot going on. And I do make jewelry still, you know, but, 
that I've been pushing back work and it's starting to piss people off. And they got to understand, man, you know, it's my mind is elsewhere. Um, don't get it fucked up. Like me making jewelry is a whole lot easier than LeBron even scoring 30 points in a game. Like, you know what I'm saying? No cap. Like that shit is no joke. Easy to me, but it's time consuming. Right. So I was going to make a public announcement via my Instagram stories that the six custom chains that I was making for this month, and I added a couple because I had, you know, some other people and I lowered the price. I think the cheapest chain was 75K, but yeah, there's still most of them were over 200, right? So I was going to make an announcement public on my Instagram story say, hey, listen, for all the clients that opened, um, that ordered a custom chain for me this month or, you know, for the rush order, um, it's not going to happen. And I said I was gonna um um I was gonna make an announcement saying that uh, I'm gonna refund you your full deposit. Well, I had to pay the entire amount, so your full money back refund, full refund. And also because I feel bad, I'm gonna give you guys either ten thousand dollars cash or fifteen thousand dollars credit in my store for the troubles. Okay, but instead I said, you know what? Why the fuck am I gonna announce that to one point five million people when? This only involves six people. (laughs) So I hit each one of them up and each one of them got me back to me. Not one of them wanted a refund. Um, None of these were Christmas gifts. So that's a good thing. So they go with waiting until January. And uh, the reason why I'm telling you guys this is because this never happened. You know, I've canceled shit before, like before I had the podcast and I got depressed. I was like, man, fuck, this is too much work. But I really have too much going on. And, you know, I should take these on and push other things back. No, like I need, you know, very, like I need a certain amount of time to get up before I get out of the house. If I'm taking a flight early in the morning, I need to be prepared mentally the day before. I just can't just get on because I got too much shit. So every part of the day is planned. If it's not in my calendar, I don't do it. And the reason why I'm telling you guys and the reason why I had to cancel this shit I just said it before. I am beat the fuck up. Okay. Not just from my back pains, which is doing a lot better, but but I'm completely drowning. Like I am overwhelmed. My bad anxiety has come back. Um, I got anxiety thinking about this captain, you know, Morgan drop today. I got anxiety thinking about my Shaka merch drop on Saturday. I got the Asian American Unforgettable Awards this weekend, which I can't, I just canceled my trip to Texas to do this thing, right? So, I mean, this is better than me going to Texas. It's kind of like filming. I wasn't ready for all that, okay? I canceled going to Rolling Loud with Cuddy. And like, Cuddy don't roll deep. You know, he's got security and shit, but it's like me, him, and like maybe one or two other people, right? Dennis and the whole other crew, they go there before to check everything out. So, you know, canceled a few little uh, um, collabs, some speaking ops that are paying me some good money. I'm just, yo, I'm just too tired. Listen to my voice. I took a two-hour nap yesterday after filming all morning, all day, and I just feel beat the fuck up. So remember, um, after December 20th, BTB goes on vacation, right? Is the first time we have ever taken a vacation in over two years. December 20th would be a Monday. That'd be the last episode for the year. We don't come back until Monday, January 3rd. So for all of you new listeners out there, this is a perfect time for you to catch up, you know, on the early eps, listen to the K-Town Hustler series. That's what probably is our most downloaded. And they're long, you know, really gets you a good idea of what my come up was like, okay? So on some family shit, I'm just not much of a of a, of a holiday dude. I'm, I'm getting into it because the kids and I try to do. Most importantly, I, I try to support financially. I can't be there mentally until like all the work is done. And right now it's, it's just getting later and later. So I'm just, my wife is, you know, she's overwhelmed and she's got to do a lot. Um, I was supposed to get a Christmas tree like two nights ago. Promised my kids. Most of you guys, I mean, 99.9% of the people are listening to this. They're not on my close friends list. So uh, I did a little like video talking about it. I promised Ryder that I would get him a tree and now he's pissed off. But uh, we have never been this late ever. Like 
December 2nd usually is the latest day that we've had a tree. So we got to get one fucking today. Only problem is it's fucking raining like hell right now. But that's okay. I even cleared out two meetings today, canceled two meetings today uh, for other reasons, whatever. But yeah, I just, man, I, I really need to trim down the fat, you know, until January. Because um, honestly, I feel like I'm losing control. It, it, it's just crazy. Um, <laughs> I got an NFL campaign I cannot get out of next week. Which I don't want to get out of either. You know, I'm, I'm I'm excited about it. It's, you know, for fan of the year for Super Bowl and shit. I got my um online dispensary still launching. I need to figure a couple small things out. I got these big updates on my Ben Baller blockchain NFTs. Uh, I got a new Ben Baller to the Strain merch website, which is ready to go now. I just want to get some things out of the way, and I got some fire ass gear. I cannot wait to wear the shit. I cannot wait to you know wait to show you guys the stuff. Um, speaking of gear. My Ben Baller heavyweight tee and fleece collab with Shaka drops this Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific time, All right? Again, we didn't make a whole lot of them. You know, made a couple hundred, nothing crazy. But the guys at Shaka decided to even throw a little incentive, a little holiday spirit, a lot of giveaways going on. It's the holidays, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers are feeling real give, you know, giving. And I'm gonna talk about giving in a little bit, but listen, Shaka Ware is giving away two tickets to the Lakers game on December 23rd. Uh, Section 109, really good seats. When you're in the 100s, you're good, right? Um, I think it's like in the first 10 rows, I'm pretty sure. Somewhere around, good seats, okay? All you got to do is follow Shaka Ware on Instagram, and all you got to do is purchase one item. Purchase one thing, you will be automatically entered into the giveaway, because I'm sure their, their POS system is, you know, got your name, your email, blah, blah, whatever. Anyways, it is the holidays, guys. And seriously, like, my kids, they don't ask for a whole lot. They just want to play the fucking Roblox. They want to chill. They want to have fucking, you know, uh, they want to be the tree, wear the PJs, kick it, eat the little chicken nuggets and all that. But uh, I still got them some shit. I got to do some Christmas shopping. But, like, you know, I mean, should I talk? No, nah, you know, I'll, I'll wait till closer to tell you guys what I, you know. My kids uh, got them some stuff that they want, but at the same time, it's like kind of good on some security shit. But anyways, you know, it's cool shit that any seven, five, nine-year-old or, yeah, any kid that's nine, seven, or five years of age would want for sure. But I'm like, again, so exhausted and beat up that for Christmas, I don't know if we're going to stay here. And people were like, yo, if you're so tired, why don't you stay here? Because I can't get rest here. Because I got too many people from my mom, somebody here. Oh, what are you doing? You're not gonna get stuff. No. No, motherfucker. All phones turned off. I got people hitting my son's phone. Like, okay. So I'm thinking about either jumping in the RV and going somewhere remote, dispersed. We could pack a lot of shit in there, great gifts and everything, and just taking off for actual Christmas Day, you know, a few days, three, four days. Or... I think about going out of town for a little bit, maybe four or five days max during the Christmas break, um, during Christmas day and spending a little bit out of town. You know, I'll just clear my head. Um, shit, I'm even down to go to Mexico because the kids are off for a little bit and I'm not trying to work while they're off. We're going to close IF and Co. down the last week. We're going to close the factory. I think we can't really close the store down and shit, whatever. But listen, um, that's what's going on. Your boy is beat down. And I wanted to tell you guys, like, if you're asking for shit, if you're homies, if you're thinking about doing some business collabs, whatever, I don't know. The only thing that I am going to get to, and I feel bad, I have turned down, well, I didn't turn down. I let 21 cameos expire. And I apologize. I know you guys get your money back if I don't do it and whatever. People are cameos. So, like, by the way, you know. I don't know who the fuck runs that app, but like their marketing team directly messages people like, yo, bro, you're going to mess with some celebrities? Like, the fuck is you doing? Oh, we noticed you're missing these things. Motherfucker, don't worry about what the fuck I do. Don't message me, bro. Are you crazy? Like, anyways, I promise you, it is now what? Today is uh, December 9th. I promise you, if you sign up for a cameo, whether it be a business cameo or a personal shout-out cameo, I will get it done 
before December 23rd, okay? So that's, um, fucking my math is bad, 10, 4, it's 14 days, two weeks. Got two weeks to book me for a cameo if you want to shout out, custom video, whatever, okay? Anyways, pivoting into some bad news. These smash and grabs and this LA crime wave is not slowing down. Like I was chilling at the Laker game last night or two nights ago, sorry. And I was talking to a buddy of mine who's, you know, they're they're rich, fuck it, you know. And their friends were having a random dinner house party in the Pacific Palisades in a like $15 million house. Like just a real chill, low key. When I say low key, meaning this ain't a street the motherfuckers just pull up on. This ain't off sunset. It's just like a it's this is a, a really affluent neighborhood, you know, in the west side you know, by the beach. It's like the Riviera area, you know, it's like, it's people are having a house party, okay? And then out of nowhere, it's 30 people. Two nights ago, they were a victim of a home invasion. Insane. Just people chilling, having a nice dinner, maybe celebrating Hanukkah, I don't know. No celebs, no famous people, just having a good time eating dinner at 8 fucking 30 p.m. Two guys pulled up, entered the house. You know what I'm saying? They probably were just like, yo, you know, people are coming over. So we just leave the door open, boom, whatever, unlocked. Came in there, entered the house with guns, robbed everyone, got away with a few hundred grand in watches and purses. In fucking sane. A fucking house party, okay? A physical therapy center in Beverly Hills. Physical therapy. That's the shit that I'm doing. Where you get your you know, your back worked on, your knees. Like physical therapy. Physical therapy place in Beverly Hills got robbed. Like a few days ago. Like Newsom. You piece of shit. Gascon. You cocksucker. You should do something. Just because I don't fuck with the police personally. because they fuck with That doesn't mean that. They shouldn't help out the people who need it. I don't need that help. I got my own shit taken care of. Okay? I'm asking for other people, which is very unselfish. Right? The head of police task forces made a statement somewhere. I just seen an Instagram video yesterday telling people not to travel to LA. Saying, yes, if you plan on coming to LA to visit for holidays, do not come. He said, because it is unsafe and he says, it sort of feels like the movie The Purge, except it's not a 24, 48-hour thing. It's constant. And he said simply that the police force is outnumbered, so they can't stop all this crime. Well, I'd like to make a statement, too. If you would like to see me turn into the Korean John Wick, I would suggest you stay the fuck away from my store, stay away from me while I am there. If my kids are near me or something like that, you pull up to the gate of my crib, you pull up somewhere where I'm going to be with my kids or my family, be prepared to get hit with buckshot, sprayed with all types of bullets from every single caliber. This shit is crazy. It's just crazy, all right? But let's get into these holiday commercials real quick. Um, my man, uh, Kev King from Hobbytron. You know what I'm saying? He sponsored the episode again. So we got a couple other ads. Nothing crazy. Uh, we'll be right back. Yo, Lakey. Miles. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Be right back, y'all. This episode is brought to you by Theragun. Leave tension and muscle aches behind. Whether you're an elite athlete or just someone trying to make it through the day tension-free, use Theragun. I'm making 2021 all about listening to what my body needs, which is why I'm keeping my Theragun close by all year. Theragun is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. And it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. The Gen 4 Theragun doesn't just feel good, it gets straight to the source of the pain by releasing tension. Using Theragun's signature percussive therapy which goes 60% deeper than vibration alone. 
Whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out or an injury or just everyday life, there's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4. Theragun is trusted by 250 professional sports teams like Real Madrid and elite athletes like DeAndre Hopkins, Maria Sharapova, hundreds of thousands of customers, and of course me, the Korean John Cusack. Try Theragun for 30 days starting at only $199. Go to theragun.com slash baller right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's theragun.com slash baller. theragun.com slash baller. Life insurance is really important. Life insurance, especially term coverage, which is surprisingly affordable. Why not pay a bit each month to protect the ones that you love? If you're asking yourself this question, choose Ladder. Ladder is 100% digital, no doctors, no needles, no paperwork, when you apply for $3 million in coverage or less. You just need a few minutes and a phone or a laptop to apply. Ladder's smart algorithms work in real time, so you'll find out instantly if you're approved. No hidden fees. Cancel any time. Get a full refund if you change your mind in the first 30 days. And Ladder policies are issued by insurers with long, proven histories of paying claims. They're rated A and A+, by AM Best. Finally, since life insurance costs more as you age, now's the time to cross it off your list. So go to ladderlife.com slash baller today to see if you're instantly approved. That's L-A-D-D-E-R life.com slash baller. Ladderlife.com slash baller. This episode of BTB is brought to you by Hobby Tron. That's hobbytron.com. So yeah, there is a crazy toy shortage in the country right now. Retailers all over are reporting shortages in stock and empty shelves at their stores. Luckily, my boys at hobbytron.com, they got millions of toys in stock ready to ship right here in LA. Ready to ship all over. Go to hobbytron.com right now. Okay, that's H-O-B-B-Y-T-R-O-N.com. Use promo code BALLER for 20% off your order. I went to the Laker game Tuesday night. I think that's how I lost my voice. Plus, I was tired. I saw a bunch of people and shit. It was a real last minute thing. In fact, I found out like at 3 o'clock. I was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's go. Uh, went with my bro, Aaron Levant. I've talked about a few times in the show. Not only is he a good friend of mine, who I just realized now, we've known each other for over 15 years, but he is one of the smartest, richest guys that I know. Then I realized when I met him, he was in his you know early, mid-20s. Super smart dude. He started Agenda Trade Show, which was one of the biggest fucking trade shows. That shit was popping. He was He owned it as well. He was part owner of Accomplice Con, fucking huge show. And now he's the president and co-owner of Network. Aaron also owns a part of Face Clan. He uh, is a part owner of Truff Sauce. Um, he's balling. And we need to have a long overdue chat, kind of shoot the shit. Might not have a Lakers game and long driving traffic. So yeah, we caught up. And like I said, he's not even 40 years old. It's like 38. And my man is touching the hunt dams, right? And what's wild is he put some shit into big perspective. You know, like why buy this? Why do this? Why do this? And he, he has some toys. He has some things. But it's just like he knows I splurge, right? And um, he grew up, you know, like upper middle class. He wasn't like broke, you know, like he's family came. He has got a little money, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, they drove Priuses, they're real chill. They got a nice house, you know, out in the suburbs. But he grew up with the Lincoln Park guys. And if you are over 35 years old, 
There is no fucking way you don't know who Linkin Park is. At one point, they're probably the biggest band in the world. Good dudes, homies of mine. Um, these guys sold over 75 million records, right? When albums were, fuck a billion streams. This is a different level of money. 75 million records when albums were still being sold, CDs, all that shit, okay? And uh, we were just talking, you know, we just trying to put in perspective what was going on. I understood after, but he told me, you know, the couple of those guys that were really balling in the group, they sold their 12, $14 million Beverly Hills mansions to move. One, you know, one went to Hawaii and one moved to Encino, right? And they still have nice homes, uh, just downsized. You know, these guys never bought Ferraris. I think one had a Porsche, like a basic Porsche, like, you know, a Carrera. Maybe had maybe a regular band, something crazy. Um, Johan had, you know, some shit, but they never went like like I went, you know what I'm saying? Like going to the centers, going to the over half million dollar exotics and shit like that. They no Rolls Royce, nothing like that. But they didn't downsize because, like, you know, like they didn't have the money or nothing. They're just being smart. And they knew that even though they made a shit ton of money, they weren't gonna make music forever and they might not have the passive income. So, you know, these dudes are just again real business savvy shrewd dudes and um you know earlier this year i put an offer on a 17 million dollar crib in pacific heights san francisco right now it was a low offer and thank god they didn't accept my low ball offer even though fuck it if they did you know then we would just be there full time it's perfect size it was cozy it was with this not whatever i would have downsized some other shit but it had been everything we needed right except that we wouldn't have a pool which kind of sucks but you know, we'd be next to Nick's family and everything, whatever. But uh, everyone always forgets about property tax, right? You forget about upkeep. Forget about even if you cake out. Even if you pay your crib off, you got to pay that property tax. You know what property tax is on a fucking $17 million crib? That's more than motherfucking successful people make in a year, okay? That's property tax. There's bills and shit that is like heavy, when you own anything over a six million dollar crib, some people used to say five, like, oh, if you own over a five million dollar crib, it's a liability. No, shut the fuck up. Cause I do. But, anyways, I feel like the bills that come when owning a seven million dollar crib is crazy. And that's forever. Entire time you own the crib, even if you own it outright, no mortgage, whatever. But, like, for me personally, between my electric, my water, my gas and cable, internet bill, that's 5000 a month alone, all right? Now, house employees, what? Landscaping, housekeepers, um, pool guy, whatever. That's a 5G, another 5Gs a month, right? So that's 10K right there. And my crib is not like crazy big, right? Maybe I'm not being fucking delusional or being... Uh, don't say tone deaf because I'll punch you in the mouth, motherfucker. Y'all don't know where I came from. Technically, anything over 5,000 square feet is considered a mansion. I don't know about that one, but yeah. Anyways, my monkey ass is going to chill for a little bit and maybe sell one more car. Uh, I'm just really trying to marinate in the cut for a while. I got some paper chilling on the side. I got liquid, you know what I'm saying? I'm good. Got assets, got NFTs, got shit. But um, I'd like more land. So the next crib I do go to, that's going to be our forever crib. I'm not like moving again. Fuck it. We, we can live here forever. I could fucking whatever, you know, tear down some shit. I'm just, no. But the funny thing is, this is the absolute best time for me to sell my crib. But at the very same time, fuck that. And at the same time, I'm thinking about actually for the first time in my life, moving out of state, right? So I'm going to wait a little bit. Might wait two years, might wait three years. I don't know. I'm going to stack more more bread, because even though all three kids got a living trust and that living trust is way more money than I ever got left with or I ever had coming up. In fact, it's even more money that I had when I became a millionaire in 2004, right? What is no fun on top of that motherfucking, you know, those bills is private school tuition. So I don't know. I worry overall how much longer I could run at this efficiency, right? 
I'm almost 50. I'm going to be 49 in a month. And I'm dead ass serious. Like, I just, I don't know how much longer I could keep doing what I'm doing. And that's why, even though I got paper saved and everything, I want to make sure that I could always make jewelry. That's cool. Not to make money, but it's like, you know, I have an enormous overhead. So I do need to kind of figure this out before I start making my overhead higher. I don't want to end up like Lil Pump or one of these other dudes who, you know, J. Cole talked about. That shit came into fruition, right? Anyways, back to Aaron, you know, we chopping shit up at the game. He's always, you know, he rubs shoulders with all kinds of billionaires and shit. So, you know, we talked about starting a new company, which, you know, probably get more serious in 2022. Uh, you know, like a company that, that we I could start, push it, you know, really get that shit popping and then flip it in a year or two for like some real good paper, like some big paper, you know, enough to where I could retire to my standards, but I could retire and not doing shit on social media, blah, 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 whatever. And for the people who are sitting there like, well, you don't care about social media. Why do you do it? Like, Motherfucker, do you guys realize I'm getting 25, 50 bands a, a single post on my IG sometimes. So yeah, that, that's bread. But anyways, regarding network, we're trying to drop something really big for 2022. I already got collaborations that we have for 22, but we're trying to drop something big, like something real next level. Staying on this network shit, uh, network is N-T-W-R-K. For some reason, I feel like there's probably people out there be like, what the fuck is network? I'm like, I should smack the shit out of you. My gold money counters, gold fridge, gold putter. Anyways, my Christmas drops with network this month have been officially pushed to January as well. They weren't very happy about it, but I'm just running too lean right now. I got no energy, don't have the effort. I have too much shit going on. Had to push it back. I need to save some of that, you know, my boy DJ Homicide, his pops passed away, and his dad said something that resonated with me forever. He said, yo, you got to save some for yourself. Because if you don't, these motherfuckers will take everything. And my energy is the same thing, right? And uh, speaking of network, tonight on the network, NTWRK, on their IG page at 5 p.m. tonight, Pacific time, I will be on there chatting it up with the legend, Takashi Murakami, for like 15, 20 minutes, we're going to talk about some of the drops, talk about some other stuff. So tune in if you can. We're going to be on Instagram Live. It's going to be fun. Now, back to the Lakers game. We got the W. Right? That was a big deal. Been to five games this year. Only two of them came out Ws. Um, only two had LeBron. Look, it was nice to sit next to the Lakers bench again. This time, sit next to J-Lo. Right? Ben Affleck. Benefer, is that what you guys call them? Who were both very nice. You know, J Lo invited me and my wife. She uh, invited me and my wife to her encore final show of her residency at the Caesar's Palace. She, uh, not Caesar's Palace, where the fuck was it? Am I tripping? God damn, my brain is so lost right now. Don't remember where the fuck her show was, but was it at Caesar's? What the fuck? I can't remember where it was, but she had a Vegas residency. She flew me and my wife out, you know, after party, red carpet, everything, you know, flood some stuff. It was really cool that she did that. Um, but yeah, Ben Affleck, huge fucking Boston fan. You already know he, every movie he does with Matt Damon is Boston related. Everything Boston loves is crazy. You know, sitting right next to the scores table, LeBron threw up his grip powder, right? Right in front of my face. Like, Two feet right in front of me. Threw this shit. I feel like this time he threw it 10 times worse. Like it got all over my, it got all over Aaron's clothes, over my clothes. Like it was crazy. Okay. Um, I was rocking my um, Virgil off white Chicago's. Haven't worn them bitches in a while. Um, I don't know. It's weird. Threw on the RIP Virgil on those joints. But uh, anyways, you know what's crazy? Me and Brown are at least civil. He tapped me on the shoulder uh, that night. It's crazy. I wasn't looking. Um, you know, and uh, it wasn't telling me to show to get the fuck out of the way. It was kind of like, yo, yo, you know, what's up? I don't know. It was weird. I, I just, I still feel weird myself. Uh, me and Dwight, surprisingly, are really cool because I said a lot of shit about Dwight too. But um, you know what's weird? Like, fuck LeBron, fuck, fuck uh, Dwight. 
I've known Russell Westbrook for well over a decade. It's weird. Since, no, is it well over a decade? Yeah, yeah. He was in college. And he played for UCLA with my boy Spencer, right? We've had dinner a few times. We've hung out. My boy, Michael, um, from Publish, was running his company. We've hung out. We've kicked it. You know, we've talked. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if I rubbed him the wrong way. Do still followed me. I mean, during the pandemic, I copped, you know, a couple cars from Copped a car from before that. Referred some shit. I have no idea. We follow each other on social media. Dude is always a weirdo at the games. I don't get it. Like, real awkward and shit. Just weird. I don't know. Shit kind of like, 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 bro, what's up? I know you focus. Like, motherfucker, say what's up. Everyone else on the team says what's up to me all the time. Other players saying like, come on, dog, you in LA, bro. Come on, man. This is our city, homie. Like, it's weird. Um, About the game, we started out slightly sus. We were down like, you know, one point we we're down like nine points, eight points here and there early on. You know, halftime gets up, walked around, seen some people, see my boy, fat ass DJ Mustard, who lost like 150 pounds. Looks good. Saw a couple of the people. Uh, Floyd was there. Obviously, I'm not talking to Floyd right now. But yeah, man, um, in the third quarter, we turned the fuck up. Like LeBron, Russ, AD. Even Malik Monk and THT got into that fucking, they got in that Boston Celtics ass. All right. Jason Tatum was trying to, he was coming in, he was trying to do his little thing, was talking shit here and there. You know what? It wasn't enough. Sorry. Okay. We was in that booty cheek heavy. There's that one point in the game, like towards the, end, the fourth quarter, we were up a 20 piece. 20 points. I was like, yo, what the fuck? And I feel like we played okay too. I don't feel like we played great. So I don't know, is it Vogel? I, I, I'm just going to have to watch his play. Like, I need to watch his play against the Nets again. I need to watch his play against the Warriors and against Phoenix. That's why I really need to see what's really, really, really good. All right. Side note, I've been watching the Laker girls forever. They are the most famous NBA cheerleaders in the world. And I'd heard something about this before. But I Googled it and I was talking to Aaron about it. He knew about it and stuff. It was just weird. The Laker girls only get paid $30,000 a year. I don't know if they get health benefits. I mean, I hope they do. But Starbucks employees, like if you get a starting job at, you know, at Starbucks, you make more than thirty k a year. In fact, holy shit. What is it for? My housekeeper makes a lot more than that. It's crazy. Okay. No, no, hold on. My pair of Lakers courtside floor seats that night were more than a year's salary for a Laker girl. It's a fucked up world. This shit is crazy. I don't understand. Like, And I'm wondering, they must have second jobs. They must do hustles. I don't know. And they look pretty good. I'll tell you that right now. This is probably the best set of Laker girls I've seen in a while. But anyways... During a timeout dance routine, one of the Laker girls, like, they're they're dancing. Laker girl, I saw her move her head to the side, and a weave track fell out of her head. Like, one of the tracks of her weave fell out. It was fucking embarrassing as fuck. It was so embarrassing that these girls, they saw it. They didn't want to own up to it. They didn't want to pick it up. They thought it was too embarrassing. So they didn't want to claim that shit. Just left it on there. The referee was like, what the fuck's going on? It was a timeout. So Dwight Howard walks up to the middle of the floor, picks it up. He's laughing, cracking up. Dwight's a fucking clown, by the way, man. I didn't realize this is 18th, 19th season. This motherfucker's been playing forever. He's a clown talking shit. It was funny. Like sitting there, it was a, it was a, it was a wild ass weave. He brought Rondo back to the Scholar's Tale just to show the weave because he left it there. Anyways, I will definitely be sitting courtside at least uh, you know a few more times before the season ends. And I just thought about this right now. What if I took a BTB listener to a game sitting courtside, like to give them that experience of what it's like to sit on the floor, right? I mean, not a lot of people can afford $10,000 tickets. You know, some of these big ticket games hit for 25K each, 50K. Christmas is up to, you know, what, over 100,000 a ticket on the floor. So I'm wondering, would, would, would that be dope? Like, what would be a cooler giveaway? That? Or spending the day with me having lunch and like driving around the McLaren or the Ferrari or something like, which is a cooler contest? Um, you know what? 
why don't you guys sound off in the comments on the latest Ben Baller Pod um, post? There's Lakers uh, pictures and shit on there, and uh, Captain Morgan man that that post with the Ben Baller Pod, not my personal page. Tell me which which contest you think is cooler. Or you know what? Fuck it. If you think we should do both, say both. So you got three options. Should we do both? Should we just do the Laker one courtside, or should we do the um, have lunch and uh, drive around in Ben's car? I don't know. You tell me. A little bit more sports. Uh, Pray is up to my boy Jamal Adams. I spoke to him a couple nights ago. He's out for the season. He's having season-ending shoulder surgery. Um, and uh, it sucks. He's like, yo, I'm crushed, bro, but come back next year and this and that. And I don't want to hear any more slander, my boy. Y'all sound corny as fuck. Like, my dude is, is doing his thing, all right? Anyways, need him healthy for the 22 season. I'm praying for my dog. Um, I'm praying that my dog... Quandre stays like I talk to Quandre every other day almost every day with I talk to him right and it's always not we keep it light but we talk about here and there I think he's going and he ain't told me yet I feel like there's some hints and stuff but like yo I like I'm trying to have him stay anything I could fucking do to make him stay you know hopefully but he need, we need to pay this man period okay um that rust rumor him leaving yo now I'm hearing that that shit's all cap and motherfuckers just want Pete to go, right? So I'm saying Russ is staying. Pete's got to go. And you know what? I'm cool with that. Russ looked good last week. I just think maybe it is the call. Maybe it is the play calls. I don't know what it is, okay? But yeah, we got to do something. Jody Allen is just like, yo, we need different ownership. We need different front office. Like, this shit ain't cracking. But Pete goes, John got to go too. Schneider got to get the fuck out of here, okay? I still think that the Seahawks are going to end this season 8-9, I mean, if we do nine and eight, make the possible, you know, to the to the we make it to the playoffs, that'd be fucking crazy. It'd be fucking amazing. You know, we'll we'll see what happens. But you know, it's possible. Okay. Um, and what's also possible is I might spend Christmas in Seattle with my family, bring my in-laws, bring the kids, everything, my wife. And if we do that, you know, get to eat some shit, walk on the Pites place. You know, I'm sure it's cold and rainy or whatever. But we get to kind of kick it at the same time. The day after Christmas, we play against the Bears. So I could take my pops to the, the Bears game. Could do that. I don't know. But uh, that's an option. So anyways. But yo, guys, that is it for this episode. I just really wanted to tell you guys, please listen to your body. The money is not always worth it. Even if you need it in certain things. I, the thing is, I don't. But, you know, it's like I'm very loyal to my sponsors and people, I want to do certain things. I turned down a million dollars this month and it is barely the fucking ninth. Okay, we haven't even had double digits yet. And um, I did it because my head is spinning, right? My stomach is fucked up. My panic attacks are coming back, okay? Doing this collaboration with Shaka was not for money, okay? This is for y'all. There's not even enough money to pay like any major bill on my house for this collaboration. We're doing this because I fuck with this brand. I want to help out a Korean independent brand. They do well, but I wanted to like, you know, associate this. You know, I like the BB logos. The shirts are dope. The fucking hoodies are fire as fuck. The crew necks are dope. Everything about it, I love it. Okay? I'm, you know, I, I like to show love. You know, a week or two ago, I got this message from Jordan tells me that a BTB diehard, BTB diehard army, right? BTB army, like the fucking legit real general of this army. He has listened to every single episode, never missed anything. This dude lost his leg in a bad accident. I'm sure he's listening to this right now. And Jordan of the Dust Brothers started a GoFundMe page I didn't really know like what was popping. I'm just kind of like, yo, I got a lot of shit going on. And uh, I went across the page. And I saw like, yo, that's not a lot of money, man. That's a few Gs. It's really not like, you know, for him to get a prosthetic leg so this dude can walk, like he should be able to walk. This is crazy. So I fucking, you know, I paid for it. Fuck it. He even tried to tag me in a post, like a thank you post, but... I didn't want to be tagged. I don't want to be seen or nothing, right? Like I just, I get a lot of spam tags and shit. So I do it manually. I check like usually after the end of every couple of days. Um, more like I, I wait for like a few days to go by. I check the tag post and I've seen it. And um, yo, bro, you're Gucci. 
I don't know. Next time I go to Alabama, you know, take me out to a barbecue. I'll take you out to barbecue. Fuck my time on you. You take me out to barbecue. But I hope you get that leg. I hope it works out. And, um, you know, I didn't need anything more. All I needed was a thank you from dude. And he said a great thank you to Jordan. And that's what the holidays are all about. Giving. You know, that's what I do, man. But yo, guys, I love you. Thank you always so much for your support. Keep telling people about BTB. Make sure you are subscribed. Okay, that is it, guys. I'm saying goodbye. Okay, we are out of here. Yo, Lakey, start that music already, dog. We got to go, man. Start that music. Yes, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, y'all. Peace. Peace.